is Israel's pullout from Gaza's Khan Yunus aimed at recuperation or restructuring? Just have a look at what Israel has been up to over the weekend. It closed its embassies in at least 28 countries around the world. Leave for combat units was cancelled. GPS navigation services were blocked. Air Defense Command was amplified. Bomb shelters were opened and more troops were placed at its borders. Clearly, something is brewing. What is all this in preparation of? America is confused. Washington does not know what Israel is up to. Israel says it is for rest and recuperation of its troops so they can be better prepared for future operations, including the planned Rafa offensive. But is it really meant for rest and recuperation? Or is there more to this than meets the eye? Perhaps a possible new front in the war? Let's just understand the possibilities of Israel's move. Possibility number one, Israel is speaking the truth. It has withdrawn its 98th division to prepare for future missions. Announcing its decision on Sunday, the IDF said that its 98th division had concluded its mission in Khan Yunus. The forces are exiting and preparing for their next missions. But then just how many Israeli troops have been pulled out remains unclear. Earlier on Sunday, the IDF army vehicles were seen heading to one of its bases in southern Israel. Apparently, they have left just one brigade there. The one brigade, named Nahal, remains in central Gaza, splitting the Palestinian strip in two and preventing the return of civilians from south to north of Gaza. You see, since the start of the year, the Israeli military has been reducing numbers in Gaza to relieve reservists. So this fits what Israel has been telling the world. But then by Sunday evening, the IDF chief of staff, Herzi Halevi, told a press conference that the military operation against Hamas is far from over, despite the withdrawal of soldiers. Which brings me to possibility number two. Israeli forces left southern Gaza to finally launch the Rafah offensive. We know that the Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, has insisted that the Rafah operation is imminent despite the international condemnation this plan has drawn. Israel, in fact, has said an incursion into Rafah is important to achieve its goal of eliminating Hamas from Gaza. Israel says that four battalions of Hamas fighters are stationed in Rafah. On Sunday, the IDF Lieutenant General Herzi Halevi said that the military is far from stopping its operations in the Gaza Strip. Following the withdrawal, Israel is adamant about its Rafah plan despite America being dead set against it. You see, Rafah sits in the southernmost part of Gaza and has become a shelter for hundreds of thousands of displaced Palestinians. It had been designated as a safe zone for, for civilians, in fact fleeing the widespread destruction in the densely inhabited areas further north. At least 1.7 million Palestinians have been displaced as a result of the war. The entire population is at risk of famine. Back in February, the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said, warned that an assault on Rafah would put the final nail in the coffin of humanitarian aid operations, leaving Gazans without support. And then last week, Israeli forces admitted to killing seven aid workers, calling it an operational error. The US and other Western allies have repeatedly called on Israel not to launch an all-out attack on Rafah. It is the last remaining area that has not come under the control of the IDF. All signs indicate that Israel is preparing for the Rafah offensive. But these are obvious signs. Does it mean they are real enough or is it something Israel wants us to believe? Because if it was, if the, it, if it was us reading the tea leaves, we would say something else is brewing here altogether. Which brings me to possibility number three. Israel pulled the troops from Gaza in preparation for a possible new front in the war. Like I mentioned earlier, Israel has shut its diplomatic missions and embassies in 28 countries around the world. Not just that, the country is in a state of heightened alert. What do you think Israel fears? Let me tell you. Israel fears retaliation, revenge from Iran.
You see, last week, suspected Israeli warplanes bombed Iran's embassy in the Syrian capital of Damascus. The strike call a killed top Iranian military commander and marked a major escalation in Israel's war with its regional adversaries. How exactly? Israel has struck Iran-linked assets in Syria many times, but this was the first time that Israel carried out an attack on Iran's diplomatic building. In the aftermath, Iran, Iran naturally vowed revenge. Tehran said it reserves the right to take a decisive response and will deliver a slap to Israel. Israel has been on alert since then. It has cancelled home leave for combat troops, called up reserves, bolstered air defenses and today the Israeli defense chief has declared that the country is prepared to handle any Iran scenario. The IDF knows how to deal with Iran offensively and defensively. We are prepared for this. We have good defensive systems and we know how to act forcefully against Iran in both near and distant places. We are operating in cooperation with the United States and strategic partners in the region. The Iran-Israel shadow war has put the U.S. on high alert as well. President Joe Biden reportedly dialed the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, assuring him of America's support. But just hours after the Biden call, became public, Iran issued a warning to the U.S. to stay out of the conflict. In a written message, Tehran warned the U.S. not to get dragged into Netanyahu's trap. Clearly, the regional hostilities have spread and so far Israel was fighting the so-called proxies of Iran in the form of Hamas, Hezbollah, the Houthis. And now, as tensions escalate, is an all-out war between Israel and Iran imminent? And is that why Israel pulled its troops from Gaza, you know, to prepare for another front? To stay up to speed with the latest news, download the Weon app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.